Hello, I'm Mark Bowling, one of the instructors at Palo Alto Networks, and this is a short demonstration about bidirectional forwarding detection, or BFD, as implemented in the Palo Alto Networks firewall. Before we get started, I'd like to do a brief overview on what BFD is and why it's used. Basically, the main purpose of BFD is to detect network failures between two neighbors. They could be dynamic routing protocol neighbors like OSPF or BGP, or the neighbors could simply be connected via static routes. For example, in this demo, I'll be using OSPF between two firewalls to show the difference in failover speed using BFD as opposed to OSPF alone. One of the biggest problems that every network administrator has to deal with is downtime and recovery. The longer it takes for network equipment to detect a failure, the longer the network is down. For instance, OSPF uses hello packets to determine when a peer is dead, but the detection interval has to be set by administrator and the quickest possible failover time might not be fast enough to satisfy the needs of the applications running over the network. This is where BFD comes in. According to RFC 5880, BFD is a simple hello protocol that in many respects is similar to the detection components of well-known routing protocols. Routing protocols can provide pretty quick failure detection timers. But if they're not quick enough for your application, you can use BFD to detect failures in less than a second if need be. BFD uses control packets, which function like hello packets. Each endpoint sends the other endpoint control packets at a negotiated interval. When you enable BFD for a routing protocol, BFD notifies the routing protocol to switch to an alternate path to the peer. Thus, the firewall and BFD peer reconverge on a new path. When an interface is running multiple protocols that use different BFD profiles, BFD uses the profile having the lowest desired minimum transmit interval. Although a lot more can be said about BFD, there are other resources that you can access for more in-depth information. But the purpose of this video is to demonstrate how BFD behaves in a Palo Alto Networks implementation. As for now, we'll just jump right into the demo. To start off, let me show you the network diagram. We have two Palo Alto Networks firewalls connected across a network of routers running OSPF. The primary link is 100.1.1.1, which is connected via OSPF to 103.1.1.1. Likewise, the secondary link is 200.1.1.1, connected through a single router to 201.1.1.1. In normal operation, packets flow from firewall 1, Ethernet 1 slash 2, to firewall 2 across the three routers. When Ethernet 1 slash 2 goes down, the path fails over to Ethernet 1 slash 3. Then, of course, when Ethernet 1 slash 2 comes back up again, traffic resumes its normal path after reconvergence. What I want to show is the time differential between OSPF alone handling the failover, as opposed to BFD notifying OSPF to failover. Here I'm showing the network configuration on the firewall 1, where Ethernet 1 slash 2 is the primary OSPF link, and Ethernet 1 slash 3 is the secondary. And the firewall 2 is set up the same way with Ethernet 1 slash 2 as primary and Ethernet 1 slash 3 as secondary. I don't have the routers in between the firewalls represented here, but they're configured for OSPF and BFD already, and are ready for the firewalls to peer up to the respective router once BFD is enabled on the firewalls. Currently it's disabled on both. Let me show you the virtual router on firewall 1. You can see here that I have BFD disabled, and that there are two areas configured. Area 0 is configured for Ethernet 1 slash 1 and Ethernet 1 slash 2, and area 9.9.9.9 .9 is configured on Ethernet 1 slash 3. The same thing is configured on Firewall 2. You can see BFD is currently disabled, and the same areas and interface associations are in place. Now let's go back to Firewall 1 and look at the more runtime stats. I'll show the forwarding table here and filter it to only show the network that we're interested in. You see here that we're currently accessing the 20.1.1.1 network over Firewall 1's Ethernet 1 slash 2 interface. What I'll do in this demo is to take Ethernet 1 slash 2 down and watch to see how long it takes for Ethernet 1 slash 3 to take over using only OSPF. Currently, the OSPF settings on both firewalls are set to the Palo Alto network's defaults. Let me show those settings to you. The hello interval is 10, the dead counts are 4, and the rest of the settings are all the default settings when you configure OSPF on the firewall. Now I'll click back here on the forwarding table. I'll start a ping on the firewall sourced from its Ethernet 1 slash 1 interface to Ethernet 1 slash 1 on firewall 2. Let's take down Ethernet 1 slash 2 and wait to see how long the failover takes to occur. So 
So that took about 30 seconds. I've done this test several times and it ranges between 30 to 35 seconds. I'll bring the interface back up and then go back to the firewalls and reconfigure them to use BFD. I'm just going to choose the BFD default and I'll show you the settings on the default profile in just a moment. Here's what the default BFD profile looks like. You see the desired minimum transmit interval is 1000 milliseconds, as well as the required minimum receive interval. And the detection time multiplier is set to three. This should give us a failover and reconvergence time of about three seconds. Looking at the more runtime stats, and you'll see that we're back up and running over Ethernet 1.2 again. Now I'll down Ethernet 1 slash 2 again, and let's see how long the failover takes using BFD. There it is, right around 3 seconds, much quicker than OSPF alone. You can tune the BFD values to get this failover even quicker depending on your needs, but by default this is what you can expect. And that's the end of this demo. Thanks for watching. I'm Mark Bowling with Palo Alto Networks.